Brenda Murray and this is Studio 56 and today I'm going to be chatting with Merrick Budzinski about fabulous food aid pens. Merrick is an architect and an urban sketcher who likes to use fountain pens to make memories of his travels. He likes to use a particular kind of fountain pen called a food aid because the bent nib allows for easy and expressive lines on all kinds of paper. Merrick lives in Toronto, Canada where he's also a member of the local urban sketchers chapter. So let's get chatting with Merrick. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for having me here with your Studio 56. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to show everybody your gorgeous sketches, the beautiful way that you get your, your fountain pen to flow and then you add the ink and it's just very beautiful, very expressive. Um, so Merrick, um, we, I mentioned in the bio that you're an architect and uh, you, you said to me earlier that you love to sketch particularly old buildings. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I mean, I like to sketch all, I like to sketch architecture. Pretty much, let's put it this way. I draw straight lines. So yeah. that's what I, what I like to draw. And architecture comes along very well with that. So, and I think that straight and old and dilapidated is always on my list of things that I like to, to draw. And I hunt for it, you know, I, think I will go around and sometimes instead of doing the front of the building, I'll do the back of it because it has all those layers of crud that are accumulated in there. And I find that more attractive. Okay. And you said that you particularly like to sketch uh, in Europe. Well, yes, of course. I mean, that's one of the locations where there's so so many places to, to go and sketch to. And, uh, and well, I'm, I come from Poland, uh, as you can tell by my accent, and, uh, uh, and living now in Canada for, well, 30 years. But, uh, but still, I, I do go back to Europe whenever I can for various reasons. And uh, often I will try to make that into a sketching trip. Even yeah. if it's a, fam a family trip, I like to find, carve out a couple of days for, just for sketching. Yeah, yeah. And in Toronto, <clears throat> I know because I'm from Toronto as well, not a lot of old buildings. They're, uh, you know, it's a new country and it's hard to find really old buildings to sketch. Yeah, but uh, you know what, it's, uh, it's it, I, I, at first when I, when I came to, to Toronto from Rome, I was a little disappointed. Okay, let me put it that way. <laughs> But then it's a, it sort of grew up on me, and now I can find much more of interesting things, uh, you know, same as like those back of the shops or just uh, going in and, and sketching areas uh, that are perhaps not that very old, but they are just so dense of the information that they have that there's so much to sketch, like the like at the Kensington Market, for instance, a market full of you know groceries and whatever, and everything is small and tiny and on top of each other. I like those those type of areas. They, they, there's always something. If there's enough to to build in there, there's enough for me to sketch. I just don't prefer, don't prefer or choose not to draw the modern boxes of glass and steel floating in the space. That doesn't interest me. No, no, I, me neither. I it's just too boxy for me. Mm -hmm. So um, you said that your favorite pen is the food. Am I saying it properly? Well, the, 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 a part of the pronunciation for that is fude. That's fude. what the pronunciation for it, it should be. Uh, that's how I was told, but of course I don't know Japanese. It's a Japanese word that, uh, that means, uh, well, the, the, here it comes, different translations depending on whom do you ask, right? Because, but it means either brush or bent. Okay, that's, those are the two situations. Um, more places show it as a brush, as in brush pen, rather than bent pen, but maybe it means both or something in between. But FUDE really is uh, the application of, uh, of a uh, fountain pen metal nib that it has, gets this treatment where the actual tip of the, of the, of the pen gets bent. And right. it looks like it's, uh, it looks like it dropped off here. I'll, maybe I'll show it. It looks like it dropped off um, uh, the here. Let's let's see if, if we can see that. Yeah. Will it show? Yeah. Yeah. So you have yeah, to hold I'm, it I'm really still. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to rotate this upside down now, but I'll turn it around this way. Yeah. And uh, uh, here we go. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, I actually have a drawing that I. I just. I just drew up a quick doodle here just now. To show the difference in between a normal nib and a food oh, okay. nib, right? Yeah. 
because this is uh, not the other way. Everything is mirrored here, so it's hard for me to use the proper the, the proper finger. Uh, so hopefully you can read it correctly. And this is the normal fountain pen. That yeah. at the bottom of it, the the normal fountain pen at the bottom of it has a like a little ball, right? Like yeah. the the tip the tip of a fountain pen is a little ball of iridium or whatever else, um, and um, it it draws roughly with that little ball. It, it could have different shapes or you know one way or the other, but it's like a point that touches the paper, and that gives you more or less. Um, the same type of a line while you're writing, especially for, for writing. While you're going around with your circles um, with a pen on paper, the line doesn't really change much. It's always sort of the same. The thickness of the line is the same. Almost like drawing with a micron pen, right? It has the, it's, it, it's thickness and you just use it to draw. Yeah. With a Fude dough, which is this one here, the, the nib gets bent at the bottom of it. Yeah. So it 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 really literally looks like you've taken a pen and it's Wrong. rolled off your desk, it hit the floor, and then it just bent at the end, you know, it just bent down this this way. So it bends upwards, sort of like a hockey stick. Okay. And the, and it becomes damaged. Now the, the hockey stick, of course you get that, but uh, I was explaining it to a bunch of people from um, a Latin country sat down in South America and they were all typing in the comments, what's a hockey stick? <laughs> <laughs> a nice Canadian reference there. So that's a Canadian reference that the Canadians and the Americans and people from the northern countries understand very well, but they, perhaps it doesn't look that that well, doesn't work that well, I don't know, in the African countries or somewhere, yeah. somewhere very hot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, I don't think there's much hockey in Australia. Uh, <laughs> so so yeah, so uh, back to the food. So this is the one that I that I like the most here, and I have um, I have few of them here. Well, okay, I'll admit I I have a little too many, you know, of them in you know in my hand, and they are all food pens. Yeah, but but not one of them is very expensive, and that's the good part of it because those those pens are primarily used. In, in the Asian markets uh, to write, uh, let's call it Chinese calligraphy, okay? okay? Chinese, Japanese, those type of letters that have for a well, while, uh, they are hieroglyphic to us because they are not a Latin alphabet, they are just their own alphabet. And uh, typically they are, they are uh, being created by using a brush and you, you go with a brush and then you just yeah. you use a brush stroke and the brush will start thick and then thin out while you're flipping it or flicking it across the page. Yeah. So a food pan was invented by the Chinese to do exactly the same thing here. That's how yeah. this is the, the largest food I have. So hopefully this shows yeah. how big this band is at the end of the uh, of of the nib. And it generates those type of uh, of, of lines where um, if I draw something with this with this pen, if I draw something in a vertical mode, I, I get relatively thin lines, right? So if I go, do have a vertical line like that, and if I just yeah. go on here, that's gonna be a challenge now to do it. Uh, it's, uh, okay, here I go. Yeah. It's, it's vertical, it's thin, but if I hold my pen the same way and I start going horizontal. Yeah, you get a much thicker. I have a much thicker, and of course, I, I have everything in between, right? I would depending on how it is. So it's uh, I end up having uh, thick lines here for the horizontal strokes, thin line for the for the vertical strokes, and uh, for everything in between. So that may be a good example here of what's happening. Yeah. It's just uh, you know giving you a very, in my opinion, expressive line. Yes. And that's why I use it, really. I like the expressiveness of Fude. Fude, to me, does uh, what, uh, well, here, my forehead is good enough here as a background, I think, <laughs> uh, for it. So you can see this, this one is a, is a very large, it's the largest bent nib, because that's yeah. the other name for Fude that you can find on the, on the market. If you're looking for a Fude pan, it's often is marketed as a bent nib, uh, or bent metal nib or a calligraphy pen. 
those yeah. are the two things I found, and uh, and we can talk about where they can be uh, purchased from. Uh, usually, it's all the typical Asian manufacturers, China, Japan, and uh, Taiwan, and places like that. Of yeah. course, you can you can have any fountain pen, uh, also foodified, as we can call it. Okay. So you can br bring it to a specialist, and the specialist will just you just work on it will take that that nib and bend it higher uh, so it will create the the flat area that touches the paper because yeah. these yeah. thick strokes here are all made by the flat area of the food gliding on top of the paper right and are you a uh, flip your food pen backwards and write on a backwards kind of person so it's you can do that with many of them uh, for, for some of them because like this one here it's so big uh, that if i do draw upside down entirely it gives me an extremely thin line and it's also extremely scratchy so rather yeah. than do that i actually prefer to have a situation where i change the angle of my pen here let me see that how is it so i will lift my pen a little uh, bit higher or okay. maybe move the pen a little bit lower so in terms of hockey stick you move it to the toe or to the or to the uh, the heel of your foot right yeah, yeah. and uh, and that gives a lesser contact with paper and suddenly your line isn't that that big actually i i i'll tr i'll just try to to do that here uh, by ch by changing my angle here okay there you go I, yeah. I just drew it now, all right? So this is the line that's taken with full contact with the paper. I did not change the, 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 the angle of my sort of attack on towards the paper. I just lifted it higher or lower. Yeah. And uh, that gives me uh, this particular gradation of lines. So cool. once you get used to it, it becomes a second, uh, a habit, you know, uh, I, it's something I don't think about it. It's uh, rather than exchanging my micron to from one to the other and so on and so forth, there is uh, many more uh, line thicknesses that I can get just from one large nib. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, why don't we uh, get started and look at your sketches? Um, I do have a question from Steve. Hi, Steve. He says, any tips for when the pen seems dry but has ink? <clears throat> now, on that point, Steve and everyone, very excited to let you know that the lovely Eileen Goldenberg, who's in this call right now, hi Eileen, is going to be teaching a fountain pen clinic with Studio 56 um, in a few weeks in the fall. And um, that's an exciting announcement that we, we haven't launched it yet. It's uh, She's preparing it. And Eileen is an, a fountain pen expert, all kinds of fountain pens. And we're really excited to be working with her. And uh, so, yeah, so stay tuned for that question to be answered uh, in um, Eileen's uh, fountain pen clinic. Unless you wanna make a comment, Merrick. Well, in, in terms of, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a typical problem, right? That's a, um, if you leave ink in, almost any fountain pen, especially the cheaper ones, they, the ink will eventually dry. Even if you leave it in your Mont Blanc and leave it for a year or two, the ink will most likely dry. So that's, uh, it's not recommended to do that. In some pens I have, since the pens I have are relatively not expensive. I mean, by that I mean somewhere around in the range of 20, $30, sometimes even five, depending on sorry, but it's, it's not the $200 expensive uh, pen. Uh, then of course you cannot expect the same level of quality and the sort of precision. So there's no air coming into the, the, the pan and it doesn't dry up ever. So yeah. what I end up doing is I end up having a bunch of pans as I do here, but only two or three of them are inked at the time. So I simply, whenever I end up mm, either running out of ink, which happens quite often with the FUDA because it just goes through gallons of ink, yeah. um, or uh, whenever I sort of like get tired of using the same pen all the time, I just will wash it off and put it you know, on the shelf and just pick another one, all right? That's really what it is. So I'm trying to maintain myself to 
keep no more than three of them inked at the same time, simply because I don't have the, you know, the, the memory and the, the capacity of, of tracking everything in yeah. there. So it's just, that's my solution uh, to that. Of course, if you end up, you know, leaving the ink inside your pen and it cakes, then you are in a bit of trouble. You might try to fix it yourself. You can go to an expensive uh, professional to do that. In a case of a $25 pen, it might be simpler to just go back to AliExpress or eBay and buy another one. That's, yeah. uh, you know, a, a solution too, right? That's yeah. just, uh, I mean, of course, you cannot do that with your grandfather's Mont Blanc. No. no. So. Well, Eileen is going to help people solve those really tricky problems with fountain pens in her fountain pen clinic that's coming up in a few weeks. So, and she says, yep, you should wipe the nib and uh, you should wet the nib and wipe it. So, but she's got a lot more uh, information about how to fix these uh, tricky problems. And we're going to talk about that in a few weeks. So let's, uh, let's get to your sketches. We really want to show people your sketches. Um, so Merrick, can, tell me about this sketch that, that we have on the screen right now. So this is a bunch of sketches done a couple of years ago, I think, I think around COVID time um, when it started. Uh, these ones are from Toronto um, and uh, they are all done on uh, using the food pan and then watercolor. In this case, I just kept a, a limited palette of just uh, two pigments here. I believe it was burnt sienna and ultramarine. But the, the, the drawing itself is done uh, using a food pen. Probably the one I was showing earlier, the one with the very large um, nib, which is a Duke. That's a brand from ja from Japan, from China. Um, and uh, it, it's yeah, it's one of those drawings. And so there's a there's a bunch of them here that uh, were done using a sort of similar approach, a lot of similar size. Um, I found that the, the, the different sizes of the food and nibs come in useful depending on what size of paper are you working in? Uh, because I like large stuff. I do work, you know, on, even on half sheets. I actually do urban sketching on things like that that are a foot by two, which is this one here was 12 by 24 inches. That, that's a, that's a, you know, a large drawing to carry around. That is large. But, yeah, but I, I carry around loose sheets. I don't carry around like a, like a sketchbook of it. So it's, um, you know, it ends up being a little bit easier on my back, but I still have to have a backpack for, for that, you know, and just go on. If you want to flip to the following ones, there will be a few more um, examples of the pretty much the same approach. Uh, where we are, you know, again, a view of Toronto here from the East End, from a park. This was done actually in the, for in, from the car. So it's a, it's a little higher elevation. You probably could, you know, you wouldn't know that, but I remember uh, it, it was done from the car because it was bloody cold, on, you know, and uh, uh, of course the, the foliage on the trees, it's a fake, I admit, but uh, that's the situation. It was a beautiful day and uh, I was simply waiting for someone and, uh, had my sketching stuff and it's like this this location was great you know you could park and sketch um through the front windshield uh, mm -hmm. i used the, uh, the 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 steering wheel in the car to to sort of set myself up with this large drawing because it was done it's the same size it's again uh, a foot by two 12 by 24 inches and that's large um so yeah. possible though well, it is a winter sketch, but it turned out not to be a winter sketch really because of all of all of the, all of the trees, right? So it's just uh, it was done in the December or something like that, and the trees, the those uh, those balloons for the trees are just uh, are really pretty much imagination. I mean, I'm a sketcher where I will try to change things to to suit me better. And I have no regrets about that. If uh, if things are not working the way it was, and the you know the those trees that I was looking at during the winter, they weren't really that that, that attractive. And with without any foliage, they are even less attractive. So I decided to have something in the foreground here that catches your attention, and that's what you see uh, in this particular case. Again, it's a it's a situation of just two pigments and uh, yeah. um, for the a uh, fountain pen with uh, black ink, which is waterproof, by the way. I typically draw with waterproof ink. Right. So um, just a, a tip that I'll give everyone from my own personal experience that if you're drawing in your car in the wintertime, 
um, you can't leave it on the battery. You either turn it right off or you have the car running, one or the other. <laughs> and you can guess how I know that so well is um, that I was sketching once in the winter through my car and I had it on battery. And the next thing I knew, my battery was dead. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering about that. So it's, yeah, that's a that's a good tip. Yes, absolutely. That's a good tip. Yeah, that's so a good tip. When, once it only has to happen to you once in the middle of winter, in the middle of nowhere, and you will remember to either the car is either off or on. It's not on battery. That's my Agreed, a hundred percent. Yeah, this one was more towards the spring, you know, and it's uh, again it's on Yang Street. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, somewhere somewhere along there's that church like that and it's just a, another drawing done um, simply by walking around I, I prefer to draw everything I can on location so that's uh, so so I, I, I walk around with my food a pan usually one because that's what I need most of the times um, a piece of paper and some kind of a pad so it's, it supports the large the large surface to draw on and the one thing I have to bring with me all the time, is uh, a spare some like some additional ink because the food uh, it goes through gallons of inks in no time whatsoever and uh, yeah. some of them they are very large and they have a very large throughput they, they just really you know use ink like there's no tomorrow but they still have those tiny little converter thingies that are i don't know how much that they take you know like two milliliters or something like that they are very small so uh, for some drawings, I sometimes have to stop and refill my pen halfway through or so on. So I take some ink with me on the location. It's always in my bag, really. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, that's a good thing. If you're going to, to food the inks, uh, sorry, if you're going to food the pens, rather, that might take care of all those uh, backlogs of inks that you had for fountain pens that you bought, you know, years ago, and you thought that you'll be using it and it sort of sits on the shelf. The food that can go through it, eat through that like in no, in no time whatsoever because it just goes and uses so much more. Yeah, yeah. So I'm seeing the same colors. You're, you yeah, that's, a... there was a series of, 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 of them that, was, that they've done. This was uh, again on Jarvis Street, I think. And it's also a winter scene uh, drawn from a car while the car was entirely off, not on battery. Okay, and, and parked. And I can see yeah. that you yeah. would have been parked too on the yes. right hand side. Yes, you can yeah. see here, you know, it's a, yeah, I, I, I actually think it was a no parking zone area there, but uh, you know, since I, I was sitting in the car and it was bloody cold, I figured that, uh, hey, if they, if they come, they want to give me a ticket, I can always drive away. <laughs> yeah, you can always drive away. <laughs> That's good. So Pat is asking, what type of brush do you use for watercolor? Uh, so, the brush itself later on, it's um, uh, usually it's a travel brush. That's what I, because those were painted also on location. So it's usually it's a travel brush simply because, you know, I don't like to take expensive brushes with me and then find out that they have fallen out from where, wherever they were supposed to be. And then you come home and the, the half of the, the brush or the tip is destroyed or is damaged or just, you know, twisted beyond the and a comprehension. So I, I like the travel brushes uh, most, I think, in, uh, in using here for that. But yeah. really any kind of brush will do. The, the problem with these drawings are that th they are large. So you need to have a certain amount, a large amount of, you know, um, of color ready for you, especially for the sky to mm -hmm. sort of be look uniform. And uh, so that's uh, probably I was using here, uh, one of the largest, uh, travel brushes that they have. So when you so is it a flat or a round? I think because it does make a difference in the kind of stroke that you it, get. It, it does, I guess it does. I usually paint with flats and my preference is towards the quill or mop, those type of things. Yeah. So that's a, just because they can carry so much water and that's, that's my preference. So I, uh, I prefer large brushes because they match the large sheets that I draw on. Okay, that's really the, the reason for it. But if your drawings are smaller, then absolutely you know, a smaller brush is great. And I, I don't see anything wrong with you know, using either a round or a flat or anything else that you like, you know, an, an, 
the, the, the oval. It's, 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 it's a personal preference. For me, a quill round brush works all the time. Okay. And um, I'm, I noticed that you have the Toronto skyline again with the Todd Morton Mills um, smokestack. So yeah. familiar to me. <laughs> Well, you probably had your work there in that ex exhibition. If you were ever were part of the uh, Toronto Watercolor Society, they have a, twice a year, they have a show there. At so Todd Morton, yeah. No, right. well, my my uh, husband's grandmother was one of the founders or something of it. I don't mm -hmm. know. No, yeah. there you go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that's another one from Toronto. This one here, it's done uh, again with the food. Uh, um, it's a, so the, the ink is black and it's waterproof. Uh, so uh, it just goes on and it, uh, it dries up instantly within uh, two or three seconds. The line of ink is, uh, is dry. I, I prefer to use uh, those quick drying inks if possible. And uh, the, 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 the non-existing color, the tone, uh, is done here using water-soluble graphite, which is another thing of mine that I, prefer, that I like to use, probably more than, than water. The, I could use a, like a gray watercolor, but I like the blackness and the richness of the water soluble graphite wow interesting i would not have guessed that wow. well there's a bunch of them like that here that are that are you know uh, i find the graphite to be more interesting you know uh, overall and there's some specific reasons for it but that's just a personal choice the one thing that graphite really does uh, great well is that uh, uh, you buy a stick of graphite for like two bucks, you know, and it will, the one I bought, I didn't even buy it. Like I got it in Chicago five years ago. I still have it because yeah. it's, it's just so efficient and so effective that you can paint and paint and paint with that forever. Yeah. So that's what the, that's what this particular drawing has. But as far as the food, it's the same thing. It's probably the Duke 551, they also known as Confucius, which is the largest pen I have. The one with the largest nib, I was showing it earlier, um, and uh, and I have I actually have a review of uh, the pens mm, that I use for sketching uh, on my Instagram. Uh, so if anybody's interested, the, the the review is there. It's been there for a couple of years now. So um, anyone who wants uh, a link to that, uh, please contact me or just go to my Instagram and you'll find it from the bio. Yeah. So I have a question about these uh, water soluble graphite. And I know uh, Stephanie Bauer, for example, will draw in pencil and then she will take a very light wash of watercolor and just slide it over the pencil and that fixes the pencil so that it's not it's, it's not going to smudge anymore. So how does that work with water soluble graphite? You're painting it on and then can you smudge it afterwards? So yeah, that's a good question here. And uh, in, in this case, it's uh, I use it really like a watercolor from a pan. So it's just you know I I use it really no different than a watercolor. So I I just wet the the graphite in a pan or on a plate, and then I go and pick it up with a brush. But once that thing sets into the fibers of the paper. It's uh, pretty much smudge proof. I mean, okay. it's you, you. If you go on and you rub really hard on it, then yeah. it's some some will come off. Right. But it's smudge proof and it's also lift proof. It does not want to be taken off. Uh, you know, um, I guess it depends also on the surface that you're using. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, these are these were done on blocking for it. Uh, I can tell by the simply by the by the uh, the size of the drawings. You know, the the one by two. Uh, they are all on blocking for paper um, and uh, and that paper you know does not uh, really permit for graphic to be lifted off and taken away right okay so i have a question here from wendy she's asking what colors are you using well all of the drawings that we are looking at here are using simply a combination of uh, two opposite colors that combined make some kind of a gray and uh, the, the very classic combination of uh, some kind of an ultramarine and some kind of a burnt sienna or, or burnt amber, but usually burnt sienna for me. Uh, this looks lighter, so it's probably burnt sienna. And that's what is being used in here. And it's just, a, it's just a, a, a two color or two pigment uh, painting uh, with all the tones done simply by mixing them. Because yeah. they, you know you just mix them up, same as you mix a red and a green, and together it gives you some kind of a gray, right? So yeah. simple, similar situation here. I use them either pure, as you can see here for the walls, 
or I use them mixed up as uh, we can see in the shadows and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I think that this, that's the, I think that is Stephanie Bauer's magic combination is the ultramarine and burnt sienna to make black. You get a very nice, rich black that way with the burnt sienna. Uh, probably. I mean, it's a, it's a very classic combo. It's, uh, it's been known for you know, many, many years that this mm -hmm. is uh, used by many painters before. So it's, uh, there is no secret to that. It just, we, which particular one you've got to go and experiment yourself, see what it, what it is, because, uh, they, you know, uh, with, especially with burnt sienna, which is uh, a pigment that comes from the earth, they are manufacturers make it differently and even in batches one batch might be different than the other batch so go and find out something that uh, when combined makes some kind of a gray and that's usually what i what i use uh, in this case if it happens to be a blue and a brownish then you can use the blue for your sky and you can use the brownish for your wall right, right. But that's uh, you know that just it just works out i really like that you didn't touch the the trees and the foliage just left so, right. So there was a, a, actually a bunch of comments here on my post, you know, to that, because some people were saying, well, it looks very ghostly. So that's, uh, I remember now that you mentioned it, there was a, quite a discussion here uh, in the, be, between my followers on Instagram uh, when I posted this. And it, 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 someone said that it looks very ghostly and some other people had other, other opinions. Um, it seems that it has not bothered the, um, the owner of this building, who is, uh, which is a school. Uh, it's a, it's a um, high school for, I think it's a high school for girls, if I correct, remember correctly. They actually contacted me later and said, we love it, can we use it for our um, annual mailing, you know, to, for, for Christmas or something like that. So they, they use this, this particular image later, uh, and they sent me a bunch of postcards with that, which was very cool and very nice. Very nice. And um, Pat is asking, do you prefer wet on wet paper or wet on dry paper for areas like your skies? <laughs> well, yeah, so I draw in ink first. As you can see here in this example, it's uh, another one. This is another one of a foot by two um, drawing and just this, the, the center part of it. And this is how it looks after um, um, a quick session of rapid sketching. I try to, to, to sketch this within uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes most. Um, and uh, uh, that's, this is the point where I sort of throw it down on the sidewalk, which you can see on, the, on, this, on this picture, and then uh, attack it with watercolors. So um, do I prefer wet on wet? For the skies, I will often wet the sky itself, uh, just because I want to have a more uniform sky. But uh, the rest of it, it's a, a typical, I, I don't think I'm much of a wet in wet painter itself. Also because I tend to do everything within 45 minutes time, really. Wow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a patient person. Uh, and if you have to plan, you know, wet and wet and you're doing layering and things like that, uh, then that takes obviously much longer, especially at the sizes that I'm dealing with, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it just simply takes time to cover this much of a square area. You know, that's, mm -hmm. this is like, <laughs> it's more than half a meter of a drawing here, right? It's, it's over 60 centimeters of a, of a length. So yeah, this is the one finished after probably about you know, 20, 25 minutes later. Um, definitely painted with a round brush because it was uh, one of the, the, the travel brushes and all of the ones I have are round. I don't even know if they have um, flat travel brushes. So I never never looked into that, but I don't use flats, so I don't need to do, to, to, to do it. If you do use flats, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but again, here you can see the lines uh, from the food and, and uh, they are uh, drawn with waterproof ink, which at that point when I hit it with watercolor, it's obviously bone dry. And uh, the inks that I use typically uh, don't bleed at all. They don't leave any halo, there's nothing of it. Uh, I mean, it depends which ink you prefer, right? You might want to have an ink that bleeds when it gets wet. Uh, some people use that to their advantage. I just paint with watercolor, so I don't want my lines to be to be bleeding or somehow disappearing. It, it looks dirty to me a little bit. Nothing wrong with the technique. It's just that doesn't work for me. So that's uh, the, the, an example here of, this was on St. Clair somewhere, some, some grocer on St. Clair in Toronto as well. 
um, you know, we can see the all the urban stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eileen uh, 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 is just mentioning that Rosemary and Co makes a few flat travel brushes, but they're not very big since they have to fit in the metal cap. So that's good. right. Yeah, they, because they, there's from what I can to, could tell, there's only two two sizes of the sort of the caps the that that uh, bullet shaped uh, um, sort of container for for the for the travel brushes, and they are not really that large. Uh, this one is in. Cambridge, Ontario, you know, closer to some, uh, you know, west of Toronto, you know where it is, of course. It's yeah. in the park and, and it's, um, I think it's, uh, I, I think it's, I might be wrong now because I'm going off memory, but it's an art installation or it's a sculpture or something like that, um, representing that both um, in, in the park in, in Cambridge, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, again, food with uh, some, some kind of, uh, watercolor paint I, I don't can tell I don't see any blue in it so probably it was just a, a brown and some uh, gray so do you mix the water soluble graphite with watercolor I do and this might be a good example of it you know I just don't remember uh, yeah. I, I just don't remember but that might be an example of it uh, this is again another one in Toronto from the cemetery here the oldest cemetery in Toronto um, which I recommend to anyone uh, you know, to visit uh, because it's a great spot. Nobody will ever bother you when you are sketching there. No. So, so this uh, thing here, uh, it's, uh, it's a bunch of, you know, obviously the graveyard and the, the chapel that uh, they use for burials. And it was a great light and a summer day and uh, yeah, great spot to paint. Um, this may have a little bit of more than the usual Maybe it has three colors. Maybe I, I couldn't remember at the moment uh, what they uh, what they have, but I see a little bit of orangey in there. So they may, it probably has some uh, a third color in the mix. Uh, it's, it's, but it's, yeah, it's all it's all um, painted here. You can see my, the the fingers on the bottom. That those are my hands. So that sort of gives you an idea. And this is my hand stretched out as far away as I possibly can. The problem I have often with this type of large painting is that it's very difficult to take a picture of them unless you're steps away. But if you're steps away, you cannot really hold it up, right? So this is me sort of, you know, stretching my hand as far as possible, doing the Elastogirl thing, trying to get out, you know, away from the camera and, uh, and get a shot of the, both the subject and the painting itself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly where this is, this uh, cemetery. Uh, it's got a beautiful, it's, it's very beautiful. The church itself is really beautiful. There's right. a walkway over here and it's a really charming cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the oldest in Toronto, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm so mm -hmm. glad you gave us a close up of this so you can really see. Um, so you really do, you're a limited palette person. You're not really using, <sighs> Uh, I get confused if I use too many colors, so it's <laughs> it's easier for me to just use a, a limited palette. The palette changes, as you can see, but uh, I, I think I prefer to use the, the, I guess drawing is really the thing that I do the most, and the painting is sort of comes later. So the, to me, you either are, you know, painting is your thing or drawing is your thing. It's hard to have both of them because then there's the equilibrium in between those two, <sighs> It's, it's a difficult thing to achieve. So I'm definitely on the drawing side much more. And that's why the food that comes in uh, uh, so often because every single line in here was drawn with, with a food. Uh, and I just sit down and draw it on paper straight as this. I don't use a pencil. Uh, if the line is wrong, I'll just live with it. Okay, that's, uh, yeah. that's one, one thing. And uh, uh, if uh, anyone watches my live so they can see me at the beginning, I put dots on paper. They, they look oh, yeah. a little bit like, like random, but they are really locations for, you know, in this case, let's say the location of the tower, you know, maybe the axis of the tower, things like that. And yep. if the dot ends up being wrong, then it turns into a birdie. There you go. There was a bird there. <laughs> That's great. That I, I can, I mean, I would really love to see you do a demo live. That'd be really exciting. Well, can we can see, talk about that. Yeah. And I can see, you know, that if you're a draw, you are a person who draws, but you are not drawing every brick and every shingle. 
Oh, well, that, 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 will, that will take way too much time, right? So it's a simplify. I think as a sketcher, um, we have to be very selective, really choosy about what do we want to show. Um, mm -hmm. And that is what the, um, so here in my 45 minute session that typically is a drawing like this, this probably took about 45 minutes, uh, roughly. The first few minutes I would sit down or I would actually spend time to find a good location that I like. But then I sit down and I just look at my subject and I sort of internalize what am I going to draw? Because there was much more to this particular scene here and uh, that could have been put in. And if I was to take a picture of it that there on location, you would have seen the difference. But then you don't have to draw everything because there's something that the, what is the, the sketch going to talk about? And that is my, my main subject. So that's what I prefer to do in this case mm -hmm. here. Cool. Yeah, this is a, an example here of one that has uh, a lot of things happening in. And um, if I just zoom in, I figured out that people can also zoom in here to, into, uh, I'm on an iPad, so it's with two fingers, you can zoom into that to see it a little bit better. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a, a drawing that, uh, that uh, we did um, live uh, with Shari um, on, on Instagram. It, uh, the, this one was COVID time, so no going outside, no fun outside, but the, uh, we found uh, this great picture of um, the, the ship here in front of this, uh, I don't know whether it's some kind of a shack, you know, that uh, local fishermen use or something like that. The, I remember that the, the, the picture is taken by um, uh, a young woman from, from Vancouver. So it was an all Canadian business here. The picture came from Vancouver. I was in <laughs> Toronto. Shari joined me from Montreal. <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. painted this thing. Um, and we painted it together with a bunch of other people because other people were simply painting along. So again, this is uh, a, probably a, a great example here of uh, uh, Black ink in food, absolutely. And, you know, and it, because it's of the size of it, this is a this is a Han and Yule, um, sketch. Let me just see how big those things are, because I happen to have a Han and Yule. So it's uh, eleven by seventeen inches. So that's wow. how that's how large this thing is. And and um, that that live is still up and, and available to anyone who wants to see it. But they, we just sketched this whole thing. I mean, I sketched in black and white, um, and Shari, of course, did her wonderful painting. So yeah. it, it's a, we started from this common picture, and the picture was great. Okay, the scene was great, and the picture was great. And then she took it her own way, one way, and I took it the actually the, the totally opposite way, and we had a great time, you know, painting that together. So That's that was cool. during COVID, of course. I much prefer to paint on location if, if possible. But oh, yeah. this is an example of a, a food with graphite. You see the blackness of the graphite here. Mm -hmm. That's a really deep. That's probably the, that, the darkest uh, black that I can think of. Um, and I find the graphite black is not as dead as ink black. You know, if right. I use ink, it ends up being sort of like, I don't know, it doesn't have the same richness. And, right. uh, and this picture here to me has the richness of the black. Yeah. Well, you're inspiring me to pull out my uh, water soluble graphite. I have some somewhere. I just haven't used it, but I should really play with it a little bit. Uh, I have a question, a uh, comment from Pat, who mentioned that that canoe sculpture that looked like it was made from driftwood was in Cambridge at the Sculpture Garden by the School of Architecture. And uh, thank you, Pat, for mentioning. And uh, William is asking, do you keep your paints light to emphasize your line work? Um, I think the line work is heavy enough uh, I, that it always shows through. Obviously, eventually, after you, uh, you put on several layers, it starts to disappear, especially if you're using this graphite in a heavy way. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I probably, yeah, I, I, I trust my line work much more than I trust my painting. So that might be the, the yeah, a confirmation to what you're saying, you know, William, that the uh, it's yeah. It's uh, um, the 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 bone of my sketching is uh, is the drawing. Right. It's not the, it's not the, the 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 painting or the shapes or the capacity of uh, you know dealing with colors. That's definitely something that uh, I leave that to other experts. <laughs> <laughs> 
beautiful sketch. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's another one here in Toronto. Um, you know, and, and again, this is. Uh, let me talk here for a moment about the the surfaces because uh, this is definitely. I mean, I typically use cold press or even rough. And I'm not sure if this shows on your screen well enough, but if you were to zoom in, you would notice that the paper is actually has, has some roughness to it. Uh, so quite a bit of roughness. It's visible on my screen here. Hopefully it's visible at your screen. And the, the, the food at nib, because it's so big and it's so flat, it sort of glides on top of those uh, peaks and valleys of the paper and it leaves its mark and it's, it will never end up being even. So those lines, especially when they are drawn fast, and that I, I tend to draw as fast as I possibly can, make quick movements, uh, quick strokes with my hand, um, those uh, lines, they end up sort of like breaking on the edges or they break across and they, they, they are not extremely heavy in my opinion, even though there's a lot of black in here. This, this painting got, got, sorry, this sketch got painted with watercolor later. I'm not sure if I sent you that version, but I remember having that. Uh, Let's painted. have a look. Yeah. Uh, no, no. That's, that's another one. This is Kensington Market here. This is, uh, this is on a smaller sketchbook. Uh, this is a B5 size um, sketchbook. So for me, it's relatively small. Uh, but it's uh, we're in Kensington Market here and uh, sketching, you know, the, the some places, the very good food there at the Tibetan village on the right. Okay, Momos, <laughs> Momos. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep that in mind. All right. <laughs> so we have a nice comment from Eileen who says your painting is wonderful. Well, thank you, Eileen. Yes, she's a big she's a big supporter trying to to to, to convert me from just painting with one color into 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 more. So so far <laughs> I'm at two or three. Oh, okay. Some of the stuff is just stayed the way it is. I mean, this drawing to me has oh, enough inf information on it that uh, there's no need to to paint it. You know, that's uh, that's just how I perceive it. You know, maybe someone else yeah. would, but uh, uh, yeah, it, it, this uh, it, this probably took uh, like an hour. You know, and uh, and uh, it's so so there's there's even more information on this drawing line drawing than I typically do. So I think it was already intended to be just a black and white. Right. And this one doesn't seem to have that much line, Merrick. This is looking very painterly. Yeah, well, you know what, you're right. And, and I think was, uh, this is somewhere in the UK. It's uh, another one of those lives with, uh, I can't remember who it was now that I was so painting with, uh, maybe house sketcher, I'm not sure. Um, and uh, and it, we found this uh, this uh, picture online. It was all foggy, you know. The, the I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's UK or Scotland or somewhere there, but somewhere on the island there is this uh, church on the hill, and it the, the the setup of the photograph was very foggy. So there couldn't so there wasn't enough for me to draw in there. And uh, yeah, you're right. It doesn't have many lines, um, so I had to go in crazy with three colors look at that so yeah. many wow. yeah <laughs> wow yeah i know huh? wow <laughs> take it take it away just too many colors too many <laughs> colors see that's uh, that's th that's the food i think that's uh, that, you know that's uh, an old dilapidated drawing uh, building in toronto queen east somewhere there yeah. um and uh, and uh, a, you know, a drawing done uh, with, again. That's a B5 size of a sketchbook, and uh, just drawn with pure ink and nothing else. I would not paint this. Uh, um, uh, it just it has enough information. I don't think mm. it, the adding the the red to the bricks would add anything to the sketch as it is. Right. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, beautiful. For me, I would be, I would have to do the red because that would be my favorite part. It's like the icing on the cake. Well, yeah, but that then everybody has their own personal preferences here on how yes. to do things. Yeah. Oh, here, another one from Cambridge, you know, okay. and, yeah. and here you can see the roughness of the paper, you know, and it's, uh, it's, uh, and it's, uh, 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 and it's just, this is, uh, there's the main street in Cambridge that everything, the one that goes off the, uh, of the, the the bridge and then there's a parking lot behind it and this is really from the parking lot area you can see some of the cars parked in front of me 
partially obscuring the view. And, uh, and that's again back of shops because I find them to be much more interesting often than the actual you know, fronts, which are all pristine and beautiful and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And all flat in a way because everybody's building up the same property line, right? right. So, so it's a, it ends up being very sort of uniform. Right. And, uh, but but at, at the back, totally different story, you know? So this is where the interest kind of came in here. Um, this, this is a quick sketch here, and you can see the expressiveness of the lines here, especially in the, you know, whatever is left over of the white cars, you know, the, this is, this is a, a sketch where the, everything together was done within half hour, probably, or if not less, just be, I have a feeling that uh, I was getting hungry here, you know, that that's, uh, that usually <laughs> speeds up my painting. <laughs> don't, don't eat before you go and then, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, this is Paris, Ontario. There's of this famous view of, yes. uh, of, uh, of the, 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 the restaurant, is it? So something about, uh, yeah, there's a rest, restaurant uh, uh, there in the, on the main street in Paris. And this is the back of, of it over the, the river. So um, I remember actually painting this while being on a live um, um, on Instagram. And uh, so it was broadcasting live while I was standing there on the beach and painting. And uh, that's when I met uh, one of my followers, Steve, who opened Steve. up his Instagram on some Sunday morning. And he, he says, this looks familiar. Yeah. And he's, Hold on, he's in my town. You know, that's... <laughs> And he's also on this call. Hi, Steve. Oh, there <laughs> I was you go. thinking, hey, this is Steve's town. He's he, there. Yeah. He is. There you go. So if Steve is on the hi, Steve. Hi again. So that's when we met in person with Steve. You know that time, and uh, that was a you know a great uh, opportunity to meet new people. You know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I won't say anything about Steve because he's listening now. So yeah, he's just, listening. But, I know. Yeah, you know, but. Uh, I think yeah. that's how I met Steve as well. I, I, I had the audacity to sketch in his town and uh, he found me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know there it's his go. town. He knows what's going on in that town. Oh, absolutely. Hey, he's the big boss there, right? So I know. Like, you know, it's true. Yeah. 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 So this is Paris, Ontario. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, oh, yeah. we Another we one. one already? We had this one already. Uh, me, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess it's just another view here. The, here you can see my fuda pan. You know, it's a smaller one. Um, this is a Chinese-made fuda um, that uh, I bought it off eBay for less than ten dollars several years ago. Wow. It, that pan is like thirty years old or so, and it's it's a really cheap construction, but it works wonderfully. So uh, don't ask me for the brand name or anything like that because it's all in Chinese and no one knows what it is, and it's probably a one-off. But uh, sometimes you can find a pen that um, works for you really well and you don't have to spend out a couple of hundreds of dollars for it. So of course there's a little bit of a risk, but in this case it was, I think it was like 12 bucks or somewhere there, you yeah. know? Uh, so yeah. it, 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 it paid off because I still have it in front of me even now and I cherish that particular pen really well. Oh, that's cool. So uh, Steve uh, is commenting he says, laugh out loud, still waters, and you and Merrick and all the viewers are welcome to join our Paris Outdoor Sketchers group meetup tomorrow. He says, ah. and you know what? I don't mind to uh, give a shout out to the Paris Urban Sketchers. He says, downtown Paris, one o'clock at the Cenotaph across from the Terran White Gallery. So there you go. If you're in Southern Ontario, join Steve, meet Steve in person. All you have to do is set foot in Paris and he will find you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's how it works, you know. And yeah. and uh, yeah, if and you can get a free guide of all of Paris, no problem, really. Yeah. He knows all the best to you know watering holes. He does, yeah. Back to this image. This is the library in North York, uh, part of Toronto now, uh, and it's just uh, a nice superimposition of uh, of different building shapes. This is uh, one of the more modern things that uh, that I painted, um, and sketched, of course, with Hafuda. So it's the same story here. I sit down. It's a 15, 20 minutes for the sketch and then maybe another 20, uh, 20 minutes for the, for the painting itself. Uh, I, yeah, I, this one, I'm looking at it at the moment, I think it's, uh, uh, it's uh, 
uh, it does not have the, the blue sky. That was like a, it was a hot day, I think. And so the sky was sort of like milky. And in this case, there's so much happening here at the bottom that I that decided not to have uh, any color on the sky because I just found it not necessary. And right. the birds were there because they were really there, not because I put some dots in the wrong location, okay? But <laughs> I you always had to birds. tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very nice. Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah, that's the same one. Same one, larger, just uh, just just bigger, bigger spot. Yeah. It's, it, uh, again, it's a limited palette. Again, maybe you know four, maybe five. That's that's it. I don't go beyond that. It's just uh, too risky for me. Yeah. So I can always tell um, when a sketcher is an architect because you all have a certain I don't know certain style, certain way, but e even though everyone's, <clears throat> everyone's style is different, but there's, I don't know, something to do with the training that you receive, I think, as architects. I believe so, that there is something that, you know, and then we all try to emulate whoever is the top architect, you know, or in the country at the time of your studies, right? So everybody, uh, you know, goes and wants to, you know, draw like whoever. Right, Sorry. dot yeah. dot dot protein. So it's uh, and 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 we do re, uh, receive some kind of a uh, uh, you know instructions to draw that particular way, especially when it comes to things like you know vanishing points and perspective and all that mundane stuff. Uh, in some cases, you don't need it at all. Like this drawing here. Well, the the the, the photograph is taken at an angle, but the, the the drawing is pretty much you know in front of uh, of the house. And and we actually looked at it earlier. Uh, in a black and white version. So this is uh, a version with uh, colors, two colors only, some kind of, uh, blah, blah, I don't know, paints gray, some gray, some blue gray, and some something reddish. Um, uh, and uh, that I wouldn't even know what the, what the, what the names are. Um, I just wanted to, to, re to replicate it and give it a little bit more of a life. So it's, uh, it's a busy drawing, but it has some color. Yeah, I think we see it straight on here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, that's just with the, the with the brushes that were used at the time. Those were smaller brushes uh, that I used because this is a smaller drawing, um, you know, relatively small for like letter size, more or less. Uh, I, I I tend to draw big. That's I I, I just have this preference. But if you like small sketchbooks, it's all great. Whatever you like, right? It's all, it's a free country. It is. Mm hmm. Oh, this is uh, Venice. Yeah. Uh, drone. Uh, unfortunately, not on location. Um, I'm sad to admit, you know, haven't been there for several years now, planning to. Uh, but uh, it's, it was drawn based on a photograph that I found that I really liked. And uh, that was another one of my lives. With the pen itself at the bottom, this is a food pen by Hero, another Chinese company. Um, again, they are all linked and shown in my uh, Instagram bio link. Um, and uh, this is uh, this pen is actually available on the market still um, for, I don't know, $20, somewhere there in that range. And it's, uh, it's a quick drawing uh, on, uh, uh, on just normal paper. There's, so there's not even a watercolor. This is just like a normal bond, you know, it's, uh, it's just a, uh, Normal paper, so I, I sometimes I, I draw I draw more than I paint. I guess uh, this, this is uh, this is more typical of me. Yeah. And the birds were there, of course. They were they are still there. Yes, they're still they're just hanging in the air, waiting hanging, to come back. Hanging around. <laughs> and so, Merrick, speaking of Venice, please join me in Venice. I'm going to be uh, uh, leading a workshop there in October. And uh, you are invited, and so are all our, our listeners, our viewers. Um, this workshop is going to be taught by Scott's Christian Sava, October 3 to 7. And we have tickets available if anybody wants to join me in Venice. Just a little uh, plug there for Venice. Well, I'm very envious of you going to, to, to Venice. You know, I hope you have a great time. <laughs> come with, come with. Yes, I know. Uh, yes. Uh, this is in Poland, and this is from uh, the most recent trip from this year, actually. Um, uh, there's a town um, called Malborg, uh, which is um, um, uh, you know, a castle. This is actually the largest European castle made out of brick by, wow. by size, by, by, because it really, I mean, this is just the center part of it. But then those walls, they go left and right, and it's, uh, it's humongous. 
and it's all along the, 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 the river and you can just sketch it from across the, the river uh, where, it, well, it was a hot day, but uh, it, again, this sketch was done really quick. That's probably why I did not have time to color it because we only had uh, maybe, I know, an hour for all of that uh, to, to get there, to sketch and to come back because the yeah. train has to be, you know, uh, the train is living without us. But uh, yeah, again, Fuda uh, to, to its, its full capacities, um, uh, so that, this is what I like to do the most. Just mm -hmm. draw in black and white. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Thank you. It's lovely. Yeah. Again, it doesn't fit in my, this is my extended hand. It doesn't fit because it's uh, two feet across over six centimeters. Um, so it's like, it's just a, it's a wider thing. It is uh, huge. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, you must be so fast. You're, I mean, when you're sketching, you're probably not chatting with the person next to you. You're just... Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, pro probably not. But uh, that's because she's you know annoyed with me already. So that's one thing. <laughs> and uh, and the, the the other thing is that yeah, it's uh, it's I I find that actually if I if if I and I do that on my lives often that uh, I will just uh, go on into the chatter mode and then my hand goes into its own mode and that's when I do my best possible pieces where my uh, brain, the, the cognitive part of the brain is occupied by finding words. Yeah. And then the easy thing, which is the drawing, happens by itself mm -hmm. automatically in, in a subconscious way. I, I, I seek that, uh, that feeling all the time. You know, I love it. Wow, so cool. I think, uh, yeah, this, uh, well, OK, this is a video, so I'll try to run it. I don't know if it's going to work, but let's see what happens. There we go. A little better here at my end. Yeah, beautiful hot day, sunny, and then the, the drawing itself here showing through um, all, all across. So this is actually the, the folder that I keep my sheets in when I travel around and uh, you know just go around with that, that those sheets of, of paper. Yeah. And that's the food that we were showing earlier. This is the Duke 551, also known as Confucius, because it has some uh, um, an imprint of a Confucius saying on it uh, that uh, apparently it's a, I had someone who reads Chinese tell me, oh yeah, it's, it's a famous saying of, uh, of Confucius. So that's, uh, um, that's the pen at the bottom here. That pen is about uh, maybe 35, maybe $40 at the most right. available. So Lana is saying Merrick can talk through his Instagram demos. He does very well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm known for being a blabber here, so just, <laughs> it's just that. So that's the color version of the previous sketch that we, that, that we had. Uh, this is color finished. Again, it's a, it's a sketch where the drawing effectively you know, uh, shows most of the things. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, the drawing is the most important. There's only two colors here. None of them are true. Um, because the building really wasn't, uh, I, make it, I guess it was a little bit yellow, but the trees certainly weren't yellow, but it's, it, it doesn't matter. It, to me, it's, uh, we as artists are allowed to make those particular choices and decisions. This yep. is all to the, to, the, to, the, to the betterness of the outcome, let's put it that way. Yep, that's true, I agree. Oh, and another one, this is in, in grayscale. It's, this was very fast. It was just before lunch and uh, I was hungry, so, there you go. Uh, here you can see, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, birds in locations where probably I was thinking of, of putting the, the, you know, the, the, the tower, but then I realized that the tower doesn't go as, as, as high. And it's just that this is the, the cathedral in Ottawa um, in front of the uh, National Museum, I think, uh, of, of, of Canada. Oh, it's, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's, they, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, have you it's been just, inside that church? It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, yeah, inside is fantastic, and it's interesting from the outside too. But it was, I think, it was a sunset, and it was really glowing at sunset, and it just had this this wonderful look at it. So, it, yeah, yeah, I think it was the combination of uh, dinner and the, the light escaping, because you know, I mean, we it's hard to paint at night, even though some sketchers started doing that too. But uh, yeah, in, in, in this case, I was really trying to finish it off quick and go and get some dinner. Yeah. I think it was a pizza day that day, if I remember. <laughs> oh, wow. You did very well on this one.
Uh, this is uh, uh, in Ottawa again from the same trip. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, same large you know, 12 by 24 sheet of paper. Um, and it's uh, a drawing the, the, of the, is it the Western wing of the parliament or something like that? Because uh, what happened is that the east, the, the main block of the parliament is now under construction and something like that. There is some disaster happening there. I mean, I mean, let's not, let's not talk politics, but <laughs> they are rebuilding the, the building and it's a major reconstruction. So the, the main building, at least last year when we were there, uh, was not possible to sketch because it was all covered up. Uh, yeah. But this this wing here had the, 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 a nice view and a nice light. So again, a sketch uh, with uh, a fuda and then a couple of uh, of pigments. And it looks like the, this time the uh, the sky got wet really. So it was like a a pre wet wash first in order to keep the the clouds sort of a little bit uniform. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Lovely. Ah, here in Hamilton, Ontario, another um, of those chapels that are at uh, the cemeteries that uh, you can just go on and sketch and no one will ever bother you. Uh, there's a, the, what you see in front of it is not people, it's, it's really other monuments from other, from graves. And that's, uh, that that's all done with the, the, the graphite technique again, same story. Cool. I'm going to have to try the graphite. Mm -hmm. Another one with the graphite from a trip to Poland um, last year, perhaps. And this is uh, in, in Poland. We have this, um, it's called uh, uh, Palace on the Water. That's really what the official name of it is. And it's uh, in a style of Italian Renaissance. Well, it was actually built by an Italian architect. So it's a, it's a quick sketch there at, uh, you know, at, at sunset or before sunset of, of that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I find that uh, graphite works really well with ink, you know, that's just my opinion, probably better than, than um, ink itself. If I, I mean, you can, you can mix ink with water and get different grades of uh, gray, but I just get the same result here with graphite uh, just using that. Hmm, this looks like nice. I ended up adding a little bit of a sky to it as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, back to Hamilton here. That's um, the, the view. Again, extended uh, com a combination, uh, a tricky shot where the scene and the actual drawing are together. Yeah. And of course, I eliminated that big green ugly thing in front because you don't need that, right? So that's the advantage we have as sketchers. We can change reality. We can. Here we're in Oakville, Ontario, a little marina and um, a, a quick sketch with uh, two colors, two paintings, uh, two pigments, um, ultramarine and uh, something brown, whichever one it was. Uh, some of the rigging was done with, uh, with white gouache on top, definitely because it's thin lines. So, you know, it, it's just simpler and, and quicker to draw them on top in white than to try to paint around. Um, and that's why I remember adding them later. With white gouache. Yeah, with white gouache, yes. Yeah. That makes sense. It would be tough mm -hmm. to paint around all those lines. Yep. Yeah. And I hope uh, we have just a few sketches uh, left to show, but I hope people will stay to the end because we have a special announcement to make. And uh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is uh, somewhere in Toronto, a house uh, that was yellow. So I picked up some kind of a uh, brownish yellowish color maybe queen gold maybe something something like that and uh, or maybe i can't tell maybe it was two colors looking at that now it's probably a, a darker brown and a more orangey brown in a combination same same trick again um sketch with in ink first the ink is black but it doesn't really matter it's a, it, it this has an overall feel of uh, being um, all uniformly brown especially in the sort of sunset that we are looking at. The picture was taken at the sunset. Right. Definitely. So Pat is asking, do you go into the piece with the dark graphite at the end of the drawing process or as you begin to add shades and shadows? Um, I usually work from the lighter into the darker. So the, 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 the deepest black ends up being maybe at the end or at least halfway through. But I have an idea where that deepest black will be. 
and I tried to reserve some whites next to it, which is a, the exact situation here. We have this, this is a, a, some kind of a old garage. It's an, it's an original construction two hours north from Toronto in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it's now used by some uh, you know, machinery. Uh, but the, the, the main part of it, which is the original building, uh, the, the, the one with the pointy roof is the original building and the rest are additions. Uh, so it, it casts a shadow which is visible only on the, on the painting, no longer on the picture. Um, and it points into this uh, one of the four windows. So I have this play of uh, darkest dark and the pure white of the paper next to each other. And that sort of becomes the focal point of this particular painting. Yeah. So I do, I do think of, I do sort of select that right away. And uh, I could, sometimes I try to, to sketch, to put the blackest right away, but typically it's from the lightest into the darkest. Right. Um, so uh, somebody is asking, are you using brown ink here? No, I don't know. This is just, a, it's always the same ink. I'm too lazy to, to, to change uh, uh, inks. It's always... Uh, one of the black inks that I use, um, it might be that it looks brown here on this picture or the previous ones because of the color of the of the sunset. You know, it sort of gives it a, a tint of the, the, the orangey tint, and it might be looking a little bit more orangey here. Yeah. Well, this is from Poland. That's more of a painting than a, than a sketch, really. So that's just the um, a location of um, in Warsaw. Uh, way less drawing. The, the, the sketching for this probably was like 10 minutes and the painting for that was much longer. Yeah. It almost looks like you added the line afterwards. Uh, you know what? If I was to do that, then I would be unsure um, uh, of uh, putting my, my paints together. I like to paint quick, uh, so it, the, the, the colors sort of melt together and sometimes they spread out a little bit. As you can see here, the green is sort of, you can see it's almost wet in wet. I'm not claiming it's a full wet in wet because it's a quick sketch, but there's certainly some, some, some stuff spreading around. And, not, and, uh, and so I have to have a structure in ink uh, or drafted structure first before I, I go to any kind of uh, either monochrome paints or, or full color paints. Right. Yeah, well, that's, the, that, that's the typical, areas. yeah. Yeah, that's the typical, the game is the Confucius 551 uh, in here. You can actually see the, the it has an, uh, the Confucius, uh, the, this, this, the shape is engraved in the cap of this particular pen. Um, and uh, I know a number of people here have purchase that pen as well. And uh, if you want a really, really large food, that's the largest food that I know of, as far as the nib size. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, that's, that's, that is, that would be the one to go for. And then if you want something smaller, there's a bunch of other options. This thing also the same, same drawing colored later on. Uh, it's uh, yeah, just another example. Cool, super cool. And okay. I think, I think that that is our last, um, that's our last sketch. All right. Well, then that's, uh, hey, it's uh, time flies. It does. <laughs> Thank you, Merrick, so much for um, chatting with us and showing us your beautiful, beautiful sketches. We have a big announcement. Uh, but first, I want to let people know that we have some uh, in-person workshops. Might be time to you know, shave and break out of your COVID isolation and come in, not you, and come in person. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to the women. Um, and come in person and sketch with us in person. So um, I have tickets still available for in-person workshops in San Diego with Hazel Sohn in August and with um, Scott Christian Sava in Venice in October and with uh, Pat Southern Pierce in Savannah in November and Stephanie Bauer in January in San Miguel de Allende. And, uh, and so we're gonna be launching those workshops next June. We're going to be in Quebec City with Renata LaHalle and exploring the beautiful Quebec City. So if you're looking for an in-person workshop, I hope you'll go to www.studio56boutique.com and check out those in-person workshops. 
And now our big announcement is that uh, Merrick has agreed to do an online workshop with Studio 56. And we're super excited and he's going to be using his beautiful food aid pens and um, it's going to be super fun sometime this fall. We'll see. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Merrick. Do you have any uh, comments that you'd like to make at the end here? No, I just thank you for the invitation and thank you to all for, you know, listening to my blubber. I typically tend to draw while I talk. And so this was, uh, I had to hold my hands together because it's like, what do I do? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> next time though, we are doing a, a workshop and we'll be, uh, you know, we'll be doing some, some, some real drawing as well. Together. Yeah. Together. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super fun. So well, thank, thank you very you. much for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for, for agreeing to show your beautiful art. It's just really inspiring and makes me want to pull out my graphite, water-soluble graphite and and uh, clean up my food day pen, which I think is probably dried out right now. And I'm going to need Eileen to help me with that. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> so thanks so much, uh, Merrick. And thank you, everyone, for uh, coming to our interview today. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And happy sketching, everybody. Happy sketching. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.